Let me first of all just thank uh, Senator Johnson for all of his hard work on this uh, appropriations bill. The, the Military Construction and Veterans Affairs uh, Appropriations Bill is one of the most important bills we do in the Congress because it, it as he has said earlier, uh, supports our veterans, supports their health care, supports military construction, and supports what they do uh, in the communities around the country and across the world, and in particular supports the Department of Veterans Affairs. So I, after reviewing uh, this piece of legislation, I want to commend him on his excellent leadership, and I also want to thank him for working with me on this uh, particular amendment and thank his, uh, his excellent staff. Um, Mr. President, I rise today to talk about America's forgotten heroes and to offer an amendment to improve upon the excellent legislation before us today. Imagine dedicating your life to serving your country. You give up time with your family. You put your life on the line. You sacrifice everything for the freedom and security of your fellow Americans. Then you come home, and you can't hold down a job, or you can't adjust to everyday life because of the traumatic experience you've just been through. Soon you find yourself without four walls to call home. Many of our veterans transition back into civilian life without problems. For many others, it simply takes more time, but for some veterans, that transition is painfully difficult. And sometimes it never happens at all. Right now, more than 130,000 of our nation's 24 million military veterans, brave Americans who answered the call to serve, are homeless on any given day. They are in their greatest hour of need, living on the streets without support or any hope for a better tomorrow. If every American living on the street is a tragedy, every veteran living on the street is a crime. Our veterans deserve better than that from the nation they serve. At the bare minimum, this country has a responsibility to provide its veterans with a place to lay their heads. Sadly, when it comes to this basic duty, we have not lived up to our ideals. Roughly 200,000 American veterans experience experience homelessness at some time during the year. Veterans are twice as likely as other Americans to be homeless. This is a statistic that should outrage all of us. President Obama has set a goal of eliminating veterans' homelessness in five years. I commend him for that, and I commend the subcommittee for the legislation they have put together to provide funding for several VA homeless programs, and I commend Senator Johnson for his leadership on this, including $144 million for the Homeless Grant and Per Diem program. My amendment, however, increases the funding in the bill by a modest $6 million, bringing it to the program's full authorization level. Senators Bond and Bingaman are joining in this effort as amendment co-sponsors, and I thank them for their support. This amendment will provide additional funds to construct, renovate, and acquire buildings to be used as service centers or transitional housing for homeless veterans. These grants are critical to organizations working to provide shelter to our homeless veterans. In my home state of New Mexico, six organizations in Albuquerque, Gallup, Las Cruces, and Las Vegas, have received these funds over the past eight years. They will tell you firsthand how critical this funding is to our veterans and to our country. While I know this funding isn't an end-all, be-all solution to veteran homelessness, it's a good start. I got a letter from a 15-year-old Boy Scout from Albuquerque a bit ago. His father and grandfather are veterans, and he's planning to follow in their footsteps and join the military himself when he's old enough. This young man wrote to say how angry he is that we're not doing enough to help our homeless veterans. Here's what he said in his letter that he wrote me. These men and women are doing what they were called to do by our government. But they come back and are treated so poorly by everyone. 
We as a nation need to do more to help our veterans. As long as America faces threats and values freedom, we will need men and women willing to protect us. And as long as Americans serve in uniform, we all have a sacred responsibility to support them. To the smart young man who wrote me that letter, and to all of America's veterans, this bill and this amendment builds on efforts to meet our country's moral obligations to the men and women who so bravely served our country. I urge my colleagues to support passage of both. And thank you, Mr. President, and I yield the floor. Senator from South Dakota. This is an excellent amendment, and I thank the uh, sponsor for offering it. And uh, I will accept this amendment at the appropriate time. If the, if the gentleman would just yeah. yield for a, a, a comment here. I, I, uh, I want to once again thank Senator Johnson. I know that uh, when you look at these veterans' issues and you deal with them, uh, you have the utmost respect. I, I believe uh, uh, you have a son who, who has served, uh, and, uh, and I think you bring a compassion uh, to these veterans' issues that shows in this piece of legislation that, that we have on the floor today. So I hope all of my colleagues uh, will review that and see that, that uh, uh, you put a lot of hard work in, your staff has put a lot of hard work in, and, and I once again appreciate you and your staff working with me on this amendment and look forward to uh, working with you to see that it's accepted. I thank the gentleman from New Mexico.